what's up tribe how you guys doing i am back for another retro review this one is going to be really really exciting for me because if you grew up in the era that i grew up in you grew up in the heyday of the nighttime soap we're talking dynasty we're talking dallas we're talking nice landing and out of all of the nighttime dramas my favorite was falcon quest don't ask me i don't know i my mom looked at all of them but for some reason falcon quest is the one that i would watch with her Excuse me. And I think it might be because Falcon Crest came on Friday night. It came on after the Dukes of Hazard. And as an adult, I hate to admit that I used to love the Dukes of Hazard. I look back on it now and I understand why all the reasons why I should not have liked the Dukes of Hazard. But that's an I can't unerase it, okay? But I think on a Friday night, I could stay up late. And so I could watch Falcon Crest. I remember watching it with my mom. And my mom hated the, she hated the Dukes of Hazzard. Like, she could not understand. But, of course, as an adult, she understood why it just wasn't entertainment, right? Anyway, so, but Dynasty, um, Dynasty and Dallas came on during the week. And I don't, I think I couldn't stay up to watch it. Either way, I grew up on Falcon Crest. And when I tell you that, I absolutely, positively love me some damn Angela Channing. If y'all, for those of you who don't know Knott's Landing, I mean, no Falcon Crest, listen, welcome. Welcome. For those of you who do know Falcon Crest, y'all know what it was. Now, Falcon Crest debuted in 1981. So this is probably the oldest of any of the retro reviews that I'm doing. And you guys have to understand, as we're going through a lot of this stuff, it is stuff, it is 1981. You know what I'm saying? So... The let me give you guys the setting for those of you who don't know. Let me give you the setting. All of these nighttime soaps had a backdrop of some sort of big business. Dallas, it was oil. Um, Dynasty, it was I don't know something dealing with business. Some I don't know what the hell it was because I didn't really watch Dynasty. I don't know, but it was some sort of big business. I know it was um, Kobe, the Kobe's, and 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 the the other group that hated each other. But Falcon Crest, the backdrop was Napa Valley, and it was wine. That was their business. So Falcon Crest is based on the Gier Gierbertis. Gierbertis, right? It was the Gierberti family. We had Granddaddy Gierberti. He had two kids, at least as far as the pilot is concerned, okay? He had two kids. Angela, Jason. Jason and Angela had their kids. So the show picks up with Jason's death. We're going to get into how all of that went down. Jason's death and his son Chase coming home for the funeral. Okay, that's how all this stuff gets kicked off. But let's go back a little bit further. Let's go back to how did Jason die? So the episode is the pilot. So the episode starts off, we see the person we come to know as Emma. She's running through the field. She's got a little boy chasing after her. Um, they get to, you know, and, and she's, she's having a good time. She's laughing. She's joking. But in the midst of her laughing, you know how you got somebody chasing you, but you laugh like it's in fun. You're not really scared, but you scream anyway. It's like, oh, <laughs> she did one of those. So what happened was Jason heard it. Now, Jason, he wasn't the businessman that we're going to find out that Angela Channing was. Um, he had a little, no drinky drink problem, you know. And he, but he heard Emma screaming. He immediately thinks something's wrong. So he goes to find Emma. He finds Emma with, the, with this guy and they immediately start arguing. And he tells him, he was like, listen, I told you, leave her alone, you know, stay away from Emma. And you get the impression that Emma's a little naive because the guy before Jason came through there, the guy said, you've never been with a man before, have you? And she was like, um, well, I never said, so you get the impression that she's a little naive. Um, and so they get to arguing. Somehow they make their way over on this like cat like this like catwalk kind of thing. And they get to tussling and Jason falls off and you know he he dies. Of course, Emma is immediately screaming and like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to do it. Oh boy, is is ghost. Like he's out of it. Like he he don't want no parts of nothing that's about to happen next. She, Emma goes to get back up. Who she goes to get her mother. Angela. Remember I told you that Angela was one of the kids, right? So she went to go get um 
went to go get Angela. So Angela comes in with her right hand man, um, Chun Li. Now this Chun Li is gonna be one of them situations that in our 2020 world it may look a little culturally insensitive, but Chun Li is an Asian guy. He is her right hand man, and I, it's just gonna have to be what it's gonna be. I have to be authentic in my review of the show. That's his name, Chun Li. Now Chun Li and Angela come through there, and Emma immediately takes the blame for what happened. Because, first of all, old dude is gone. Second of all, she does not want her mama to know that she was running through the vineyards with some dude in the middle of the night. And third of all, she immediately feels guilty because Jason was there to defend her, look out for her, and now he's dead. Angela immediately goes into um, protect her cub mode. And they, you know, and I guess her thing is, hell, Jason already dead. Ain't no need, ain't no need in having no investigation. He already dead. And they set it up. They put him in his um, van. They douse him with a bunch of liquor. And they push, I mean, the truck, and they push his truck over a cliff. So it looks like he ran off the road drunk driving. Emma knows the truth. Angela knows the truth. Chun Lee knows the truth. But that's it. Well, and the other dude, we'll get to him later, child. Um, now, back in New York, we see Chance. Chance is an airline pilot. And we see him, we meet his family, his, his wife, Maggie. Chance is Jason's son. Okay, I hope y'all are following this. I think maybe I might write out a, a, a family tree. But Chance is Jason's son. So we're in New York. We meet his family. Him, his wife Maggie. Maggie's a writer. Um, his son Cole, his daughter Vicky. Now Vicky, here's one of my first criticisms as I look back as an adult on this show. Vicky's supposed to be 17. Cole's supposed to be straight out of high school, 18-ish, 19-ish. And both of them look like they got kids. Maybe even some grandkids. Like, no parts of Vicky look 17 to me. But anyway, I thought she was, like, in college. Like, when I first, I was like, oh, cause, because the whole thing is that she's sleeping with her teacher. I was thinking it was, like, her college professor. Because she looked old enough to be in college. You know what I'm saying? But she's sleeping with her um high school teacher. And Cole knows. Her brother knows. But, of course, the parents, they don't know they're oblivious. Chase has this great career as an airline pilot. And, you know... The innuendo, you know, as an airline pilot, is that he was making good money. I mean, obviously, in the early 80s, he was making good money. They were living in New York. Duh, 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 duh. Had a good life, right? She gets the phone call that his father is dead. So, of course, they immediately get on a plane. They fly out there for the funeral. Now, they leave the kids back in New York because, hell, they ain't know their granddaddy. Because come to find out, Chase left. Um, and, and, okay, I'm over, we're going too fast. Let me, let me rewind. Let me slow down. They leave the kids back in New York. We'll get to that part about why and all of that later. Now, back in um, California, and, and um, they're right outside of San Francisco, again, in the Napa Valley. And the land that they live on that their grandfather bought and created the vineyard was called Falcon Crest. That's where the name comes from. Why was it called Falcon Crest? Because the Falcons, there used to be a whole bunch of Falcons that would land and live there and it was named after the Falcons. Okay. Falcons. So of course Angela is like it's like that whole big wig in a small town. The sheriff never questioned anybody's, you know, of course they act like they didn't know nothing about it when the sheriff showed up and told them that, you know, he ran his car off the road. Um Emma of course is feeling all kinds of guilty and we find out that Emma is a little fragile. Emma is a little little weak, a little fragile. And so they immediately you know, talk about giving her her medicine and, you know, give her a Saturday because she is really, she is really gone off and they're worried about her having a little breakdown. Now, back in New York, like I said, Chance and um, Maggie on their way to the funeral. Back in New York, Cole follows his sister to the boyfriend's apartment, aka her teacher. And... He's breaking up with her. He's actually up in the apartment breaking up with her. And she's like, why? Why do we have to break up? I don't understand. Da, 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 da. And Cole actually runs up there, knocks on the door, and immediately starts beating old dude up, right? I guess he had just had it, you know, He, because, I mean, he knew that they were sleeping together. But I guess he was just like, you know what? Mom and dad are out of town. Let me go ahead and get this whole thing. Let me shut this shit down right now. He ends up fighting the dude, gets, ends up, gets the security guard calls the police. He ends up getting arrested. He had the police take the child. They have the funeral back in California. They have the funeral. And it was very quick. You know, 
we find out that Chance didn't really have much of a relationship with his dad. That dad and mom divorced. Mom took, you know, Chase. And he basically hadn't been back in years. It, it seems like he hadn't been back in about 15 years back to visit his dad. And um, he's feeling a little guilty. But also kind of like... Well, dad never really did anything to sort of, you know, gaunt, hone a relationship with me. He said I used to write him. He never wrote me back. But one thing he does pick up on for the very beginning is he ain't really, he not really feed eating what Angela is serving. Like he, 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 he already kind of giving Angela the side eye like, yeah, I don't know. I got my eye on you because I'm really not feeling you. Um, but Angela is playing nice nasty. Like, she's playing real sweet as pie, but underneath, you kind of feel like there's more to it. You know what I'm saying? So, they get to the reception after the funeral, and before they get to the reception, Chance actually talks to one of the guys that worked for his dad. And Chance knew the guy, I forget his name right now, but he's, um, a Mexican-American. I forget his name, and I don't want to say the wrong name, but I'll get it, you know. And he sort of let on that it was more to the story about the dad dying than what, than that, you know, he doesn't believe that the dad was drunk driving. Like, he don't believe that version of the story. And, um, but he doesn't obviously have any proof or have anything concrete. He just sort of throws it out there and they're just kind of like, oh, okay, you know, like, you know. So they get to the reception back at Falcon Crest and we get to meet some more characters. We meet, um, Julia. Julia is also, um, Angela's daughter. So we have Abby, we have Julia that are Angela's children. And Abby, I mean, uh, Julia actually has a son named Lance. Now, um, Lance is the the stereotypical spoiled rich kid. Like, grew up with everything. Um, and he really defers to Angela, his grandmother, for everything. It's almost like his mother is his mother, but we'll dig deeper into their relationship later. But he don't really defer to his mom for a whole lot of nothing. He defers to grandmother for everything, right? And grandmother is like, listen, I'm going to go ahead and go through all of the rigmarole, but we're going to go ahead and get Chance up out of here as quick as possible. Let him go on back to New York, to his life, do whatever the hell he was doing over there on the East Coast so I can get back to doing what I was doing here on the West Coast. And now that Jason is dead, the way that their father's will was written is basically... All of the land minus 50 acres, because they had to split the acres, half, you know, 50-50. But now that the father is dead, all of the land diverts to the oldest living heir, which would be Angela, minus 50 acres. And Angela, she got her little slick lawyer, and we're gonna we're gonna get down, we're gonna get to more of the lawyer later on too, Philip. Um, um <clears throat> we're going to get to that. But, you know, Philip, you know, is proposing, well, you know, Angela is being very generous and offering you well above market value and we can do it here, do a direct sale so you don't have to pay a third person and, you know, I'll even take care of the taxes and everything. Basically, I'm going to take this off your hands because you ain't never been out here before anyway and I know you already, you really don't care about the land. So I care about the land. It's my grandfather's land. Let's go ahead and take care of this as soon as possible so you can go do what you do and I can do what I do. And Chase at first was like, okay, but Chase felt like that he didn't say it, but there's a part of him that, you know, he kind of feels like this is a little too easy. You know what I'm saying? This is a little too, right? But they staying overnight. They only staying overnight. And, you know, Chance is starting to feel a little, he's feeling like it's just a little bit, it's something more going on than he feels, you know? So the next day he goes to his dad's house, the house where he grew up, and it it's abandoned. It's been run down. Clearly nobody's been taking care of it for a very long time. But he ends up finding everything he's ever sent his dad. All of the, the letters that he wrote that he said his dad never responded to. All of the pictures that he sent his dad over the years of the kids and the family. And you can see he's starting to really feel very nostalgic. And of course, a lot of things he probably thought about his dad may or may not necessarily be true. But what he does remember is that Angela is not a nice woman. He remembers very vividly how nasty Angela was to his mom. He was like, I don't know why. I don't know why she didn't like my mother, but what I do know is that she was always nasty to my mother. And that really did play a part in why my mom and my dad's relationship did not work out. And she took me and got the hell up out of Dodge. So, um, 
Okay. Okay, so as they're leaving, they're on their way back, you know, they got to get ready to get ready to catch their plane. He runs into the um, the the Mexican guy that was um, helping his dad. He's packing up. And Chase was like, what do you want with? Like, what's up? And he was like, oh, well, you know, Miss Channing gave me my walking papers. Like, she fired us. And Chase was like, what? Whoa, wait, whoa. Like, y'all been here for years. Like, y'all have been, like, dedicated workers to my dad. Like, that's messed up. That He was like, my dad's not even cold in the ground yet. And she throwing y'all off the property. Like, that's real messed up. So they, um, you know, she he was like, listen, don't go nowhere. Y'all unpack. I'm going to go ahead and take care of this. So he goes to talk to Angela, and he's still playing real nice, nasty to her, you know. And he says, "Listen, what's 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 going on? Why why are you firing old boy?" And she was like, "Listen, his skill set just doesn't meet our standards. Like it was okay for your dad, but he's you know basically he was all right for what your dad was doing that little yang yang your dad was doing, but for the kind of operation I run, he ain't he 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 don't he don't he don't meet my criteria. He can't work here. And um." Chase was like, well, you know what? What if I decided to come back? And baby Maggie was like, what? Because <laughs> Maggie's ready to take that check and going back to New York. She was like, that's cool. It was nice meeting all of y'all. I'm ready to get back to New York, okay? So Chase was like, yeah, I mean, what if I did, you know, just decide to come back? And Angela was like, well, well why would you do that? <laughs> she said, I, I was always under the impression that you weren't interested. You never came back. You never helped your dad. You know, your dad had been waiting for you to come back and help him for years. And you just never did. So I, I didn't think this was something you wanted. And Chance was like, well, I just have to think. Chase, Chase, Chase whatever. I just have to think about it. And so they head back. And while they did, they get the phone call from the police department to let them know that the boy, that um the son... Yeah, the son was in was son had been arrested. They get back home. Now here's where a few other things. Let me just go on name a few other things that probably wouldn't fly in a 2020 situation. The whole deal with the father going off the cliff. Like, ain't nobody have on no gloves. They, you know, it'll been Chun Lee's fingerprints would have been all over that truck. They would have immediately known. You know, I know the truck blew up, y'all, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, y'all look at NCIS, y'all know how they can do this stuff, the CSIs and stuff. The other thing was they get back and Chase is talking to the son. Maggie's talking to the daughter. And the daughter eventually admits to her that she was sleeping with the with the teacher. And on one hand, I could say, well, Maggie, you handled it pretty good because she got a lot of information out of the daughter by not going all the way the fuck off. But once you got the information that you needed, I need to know why y'all didn't immediately go down to the police station and have that motherfucker arrested. Like, Chance's response to it was, Chase, Chance, Ch Chase. His response was, I feel like I'm losing my family. You know, I've been traveling their whole life. They're just scattering. I can't believe. Like, dude. Dude. Like, you can blame yourself all you want, but what I'm not understanding is why y'all ain't whooping his, like, like, your son wasn't wrong for whooping his ass. Let's be clear. And I'm not understanding why you wasn't at the police station filing charges immediately. Because the girl admitted she was 17 in the conversation with the mom. Anyway, but basically what Chase decided was this was his opportunity to get his family back. He was like, I feel like we're all scattering. You know, the son wants to be um, um, a, a, um, a, a archaeologist, but ain't going to nobody's college. But he's still sitting in New York. Now, I ain't heard of too many digs going on in the New York, uh, New York, New York area. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, the daughter is having an affair with her teacher at 17 years old. And so he just feels like he's losing his family. And he was like, this is a perfect opportunity for us to, you know, figure out a way back to each other to build up our family. Honey, Maggie was like, can we just take a vacation? Can we just take a family vacation and sit down and discuss our issues? <laughs> he was like, no, because we're going to come back home and then we're going to fall back into the same habits. He was like, she said, what about your job? And he said, well, you know, I don't have it all figured out. But, you know, we I make a good living and we, we live in real comfortable spending money on a bunch of shit we just don't need. Like, she said, what about my job? 
Now, in 2020, it wouldn't be an issue. Y'all know you can write from anywhere in the world. She was a freelance writer. So in 2020, she could write from anywhere in the world, email that shit and keep it moving. Y'all know. But of course, in you know 1981, it ain't that easy. If she's moving out of New York, she's really taking herself out of contention. And, um, you know, he was like, well, listen, I just don't have it all figured out. But I do know that I'm losing my family and I, I got to, I have to do everything I have to do to try to keep my family together. And she, have, she acquiesces to it. She's like, well, whatever you think is best, Chase, whatever you think is best. So, honey, they pack up the station wagon. Now, again, for some of y'all, y'all not going to know what that is. Y'all ain't never seen one before in y'all life. So when you watch this episode, you'll see what a station a station wagon in 1981 is the 2020 SUV. Okay? All right. They pack up the station wagon and they drive from New York City to um, San Francisco Child. Now, a few things I thought about as I was looking at this with my 2020 eyes. He couldn't, like, get work done on the house before they got out there. Like, he couldn't wait a couple of months and have some people going into that house and getting that house fixed up and getting it ready for them to move into. Like, you knew the house was, was busted when you was out there visiting. And I just feel like in the time it took you to quit your job, pack up your house, put your house on the market, and drive the two or three days to drive cross country, you could have waited like another month and got that house in some some sort of working order. Especially since you know you said y'all had a little bit of change. Had a little, little change. But they didn't do that. So they, they get to California and Angela has said to Lance, because Lance was like, well, Angela, why do you hate, you know, grandmother, why do you hate them so much? And he was, she was like, I don't hate them, but I just feel like, you know, the the way I feel about it is the land belongs to the people that want it and that are willing to put in the work. He ain't put in no work. So it, it, he shouldn't get it just by default. He shouldn't get the land just because his father owned the land. The land should go to who was willing to keep the 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 Jared, Jared, the Garibaldi's name going. And she does have a valid point from that point of view. Like, listen, I've been busting my ass to keep this, this winery going. I've made it a premier winery in the world. And so you don't get to just come along on a flute. You don't know nothing about this. From that point of view, she ain't wrong. You know what I'm saying? But then the flip side is, it's his. It's his to do whatever he wants to do with it. You know what I'm saying? So she was like, listen, he been out here flying, you know, planes for the last 20 years. Let him keep flying his planes. Just don't land here. But honey, he done made the mistake of landing there. Now, Angela is going to come from the school of killing them with kindness. So we'll see how that work out. That's episode one, season one. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about this. Now, listen, um, if you love the nighttime dramas, the, the nighttime, the era of the nighttime soap opera, Lady Nika is going to review Dynasty. Every reviews will be doing Dallas. And I think Lady Nika might do Nice Landing as well. You know, Nice Landing was a spinoff of Dallas. So... Um, and I might do Knox Landing, and me and Lady Nika might do it together. Uh, I never, ever, ever watched Knox Landing. So for me, it would be a brand new show. Like, it would be fresh eyes. I've never watched Knox Landing. I knew it was a spinoff of Dallas. And I looked at Dallas in reruns. Y'all remember Soap Opera Network? Remember Soap Opera Network used to be, um, I don't know if it's still on or not. But when it first started, they used to show all of these old shows. That's how I kind of fell in love with Falcon and Crest all over again. That's when I watched Dallas. I mean, yeah, Dallas for the first time. Um, I watched Dynasty for the first time, and I even watched the Kobe. So that's how, I, but I didn't watch them when I was a kid. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think, y'all. Drop it in those comments. Peace.